Hello, and welcome to another PlayingCards.io video. I created one already that's about 17 minutes long that shows you how to use PlayingCards.io or PCIO as a player. Well, in this video, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna make it a much shorter version. So it's just gonna get right to the point of exactly what you can do in a PCIO room. So the first thing you wanna of course do is load up the playingcards.io room. However, that link was sent to you, just getting that room code is the important part. When the room first loads up, you're gonna to wanna to click enter and it's gonna put you into a seat in the room. When you see this little silhouette of a person, that's gonna show your spot. If you click on these three dots, you have a few options here. You can change the color of your circle, which is going to be the color of your mouse when you move it around for other players. And you can also hit stand up from seat if you wanted to change to a different player seat area. You can click in the middle and you can type in your name and you can also click in the circle and type in something for like your initials or whatever it is that you want to go there. To manipulate the cards, all you need to do is left click on it and drag it around wherever you need to. To flip the card over, simply left click without dragging and it'll flip it face up and face down. This section down here at the bottom is your hand. That's where all of your cards are going to go to you that are only visible to you. So if you click and drag a card down there, only you can see that and nobody else can. If you have a whole hand of cards, if you want to separate these out, all you have to do is simply click and drag it until a new shadow area shows up that's separate from the rest of them. You'll see this little tab here. That's the number of cards that's in that pile or in that group. So if you click and drag this other card, you're going to see now a new group of two has shown up as well as a group of nine. You can keep doing this as many cards as you'd like. Now, if you want to do that a little bit quicker, when it's still a single group, if you click on that number tab itself, there's this cut deck option. You can click and drag this to the number that you want, click on the cut deck, and it'll automatically cut those cards for you. As you can see with that number tab, if you wanna move all of those cards around, you just click on that number tab and move it, and it'll move all of the cards in that stack. If you wanna just move an individual card again, click on the one card you wanna move around and you can manipulate it that way. Same thing within your hand, just click in the middle and you'll be able to drag it out. Some cards you may need to change the orientation. If you right click on the card and you can rotate it, you'll see these arrows. That's gonna show you the number of orientations the card can have. So if I have it go down there, it'll change that way rotate it back up there, it'll go that way. One thing I do wanna quickly mention here, cards that are in your hand, again, are only visible to you, but as soon as you move it away from your hand area, all players will be able to see it. So just keep that in mind. There are some rooms that when you drag the card out, it will actually flip the card face down automatically for you. And when you drag a card back into your hand, it'll automatically flip the card face up. In a lot of rooms, you're gonna see these bluish greenish buttons. These are automation buttons. Whatever the automation button is titled as, it's going to be doing some sort of automation related to that. This is created by the person who made the room. All you need to do is simply click on it and it's going to trigger whatever that automation is. Just gonna load up another room here real quick. Okay, so a couple other things I wanna go over. First one is the chooser or selection buttons. It's going to be the squares that have multiple options on them. They may be different sizes and shapes, but when you click it itself, it's gonna give you some options here. The important part here is that when you first click on it, when it shows you these different options to pick from, this is only visible to you. No other player can see it until you actually make your selection, in which case now it is visible to all players. But again, all you need to do is simply click on it once, choose the appropriate option, and click on that. Next thing are gonna be these counters. 
So you typically use that for keeping track of your score or in these trick-taking card games, the number of tricks you've taken. All you have to do is simply click the plus or minus to make it go up and down. Depending on the room, the tracker may go up by a different number. So as you can see, this one goes up by 10 and this goes up by one. The other thing you can actually do is if you click in the middle of it, you can manually type in a number. So if there's something you're trying to get too fast or without clicking a bunch of times, you can just type it in. To create a PCIO room yourself, all you have to do is click on games from the main homepage, click on a room, start the game, enter, click on this little briefcase for edit table, slide this up, click room options, import from file, find the PCIO file that you have saved, double click on it, it will load up, might take some time depending on how big the file is, but you've got your room. All you have to do is then share this room code with players and they'll be able to join in the room with you. Last thing I do wanna go over here is if you create an account on PCIO, you can actually have your rooms saved within here. They do expire within 30 days of inactivity. So as long as you go back into the room, that 30 day timer will start over but you do wanna be mindful of that. So I personally save that PCIO file, which you can do simply by going back to where you imported a file. All you need to do is click export to file. It'll download that room and it'll save it as that .pcio file for you to upload somewhere else. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments.